Hi, I'm Scott Swenson. Today we're here at Lynn's Propane Trucks and we're going to take a look at adjusting the differential pressure on your bobtail. Now it's late fall, winter's a few weeks away. This time of year it's absolutely crucial that your bobtail is running at the peak of efficiency. Uh, now setting your differential pressure has a lot to do with that because it directly affects your gallons per minute. Now before we look at adjusting the differential pressure, first we're going to review what is differential pressure and how do I determine if I need to adjust it. What is differential pressure? Differential pressure is the difference in pressure in your piping system from when your PTO and your pump are off and your PTO and your pump are on. So right now my PTO and my pump are off. I've got a reading of 90 pounds on my differential pressure gauge. So if I turn the PTO on and kick the pump into gear, it is going to go up. The reason for that is that I'm adding pump pressure to my piping system. So the difference in those pressure readings with the pump on and with the pump off is essentially differential pressure. Now most trucks are built with a differential pressure gauge right in line as you see on this truck here. Now without that differential pressure gauge, you wouldn't be able to set the differential pressure with this external bypass. Uh, we'll get into setting that in a few minutes, but right now we'd like to focus on the pressure on that gauge right now. We have approximately 90 pounds on that gauge. So if you remember, the differential pressure is the difference in pressure when the pump is off and when it's on. So with this 90 pounds, we're going to start the PTO and kick the throttle up and see what we have for a reading. We started at 90 pounds and we turned the PTO on and kicked the throttle up and we went up to 180. So 180 minus 90 is 90 pounds. The difference in the two readings is 90 pounds so we have 90 pounds of differential pressure. Now for comparison purposes what we'd like to do is see what we're getting for gallons per minute when our differential pressure is set at 90 pounds. So I've got the hose and nozzle hooked up to the vapor on the truck and we're going to simulate a delivery and see what we get for gallons per minute. So the PTO is engaged, I have the high throttle on and we're going to hit the selector switch to see what the flow rate is. And right now we're getting 54 gallons per minute. So what we'll do is after we adjust the differential pressure, we'll check our gallons per minute and see what gains we've made. So our truck here has 90 pounds of differential pressure. The industry standard is 90 to 110 pounds of differential. Uh, at Lens, we like to set them on the higher end of the spectrum at around 110 pounds. Uh, the reason for that is the higher the setting, the more gallons are pushed through the hose end nozzle. The lower the setting, the less gallons are pushed through. So the setting has a direct effect on your gallons per minute. Now before we adjust this bypass to see if we can get more gallons per minute, I'd like to take a look at an external bypass so you understand how they work. The gas flows into the bottom here and then if you look inside you'll see a metal disc that will seat on the valve and right above that you'll see a spring. That spring in this particular truck here is rated for 91 to 125 PSI. So what that means is I can set the bypass pressure on this truck from 91 PSI to 125 PSI. Now these bypasses you can get them with springs with a lower setting or a higher setting uh, but for this application that's the spring we're going to use. So to adjust the differential pressure, what we need to do is take this cap off our bypass. And if you look here, what you see right here is a locking nut. So once we have it adjusted to where we want it, we will tighten that locking nut so that it locks in that pressure. But for now, what we want to do is loosen that up so that we can adjust it. So we've loosened that nut up. So to adjust the bypass, this is the adjusting stud here. So if we turn it clockwise, it's going to put more pressure on our spring and make it more difficult for the gas to flow through, which equals higher differential pressure. If we turn it counterclockwise, it 
loosens and it takes pressure off the spring so that it's easier for gas to flow through and it lowers our differential pressure. So in order to adjust it, what we want to do is we want to turn the PTO on and kick the throttle up. So what we'll do is turn it clockwise because we would like to reach a higher differential pressure. We'd like to go from 90 pounds to 110. So we'll turn this clockwise and as we do we can watch the pressure go up on our differential pressure gauge. So we started at 90 pounds to get to 110 pounds of differential pressure we want to keep tightening this until we hit 200 pounds. So now we've reached 200 pounds. We started at 90. We added a, 110 equals 200. So we have 110 pounds of differential pressure. So here we are ready to simulate a delivery again. I've got the hose and nozzle hooked up to the vapor pipe on the truck again. And we want to compare our gallons per minute. Now before we ran it with 90 pounds of differential and we had 54 gallons per minute. So now we've adjusted our differential pressure. We're up to 110 pounds of differential and we want to see how many gallons per minute we get now. So I'm going to kick on the PTO and the throttle and we'll see what we have. Now I'll hit the selector switch. So we went from 54 to 66 and a half. We've gained 12 and a half gallons a minute. That's 23% more efficient just by taking a couple minutes to adjust our differential pressure. So that's how you adjust your differential pressure. In this case, you can see we gained 12 and a half gallons a minute. We increased our efficiency by 23%. And all it took was about five minutes. Now I know what you're saying. That's a brand new truck, easy as one, two, three. What about my older truck, my eight, nine, 10, 11 year old truck in the yard? It's not gonna be that easy. Well, that's true. You could encounter a few problems. Uh, one of them would be you can't get the 110 pounds of differential. You can only get it to 100 pounds. And the other issue may be you get the 110 pounds, but you're not getting the gallons per minute that you wanna see. So let's take a second and we'll address some of the causes for those issues. So the first issue you may have is not being able to get the differential pressure up to 110 pounds. If you take the adjuster nut and you've turned it clockwise and it's bottomed out and you're only at 100 pounds, you can't get any more differential pressure, the cause of that most likely is your pump is starting to wear and it can't produce that kind of differential pressure. Now you still may be getting gallons per minute at a decent rate through the end of your hose end nozzle, but your pump is gradually wearing and it's going to need to be rebuilt sooner rather than later. Let's touch on the other issue you may be seeing. You've got 110 pounds of differential pressure but you're not seeing the gallons per minute that you want to see. There are a lot of possible causes to this uh, but let's touch on a few. Uh, one of them is the piping system. Here at Linz we pipe everything two inch. Uh, a lot of the other ones you're going to see smaller piping from other builders. Also the bypass, we've got a two inch bypass. A lot of the times you're only seeing an inch and a quarter bypass. That can affect the gallons per minute. Uh, also, you could have a meter issue. Uh, one of the most common ones we see is the strainer. It needs to be cleaned. So uh, if you haven't cleaned it in a while, that definitely could be your issue. Uh, some of the other problems you could be having could be your hose and nozzle. It's worn, it's not opening all the way, it's restricting flow. Uh, it could be something as simple as just replacing the pin in the seat to get your gallons per minute back. Another issue, check valves. Uh, as soon as you put one of these on your hose and nozzle, you're going to lose five to seven gallons a minute. Uh, you can lose gallons per minute with your hose length as well. Uh, if you go from a 125 foot hose to a 150 foot hose, you're going to lose five to seven gallons a minute right there. We've also seen a lot of other issues. You know, it could be a, a collapsed hose. Uh, it collapses from the inside that's restricting flow. We've seen excess flows in the piping system after the meter that have just come apart. And parts from the excess flow have lodged in the 90 right before the meter here, restricting flow. So there's a lot of issues that could be happening. Another one could be too, 
if you're running the liquid through here to test your gallons per minute, the internal excess flow valve here could be restricting flow. To get the most accurate reading, you would want a three and a quarter Acme with an adapter so that you can hook your hose and nozzle up here. That way it's only traveling through a back check and it's not being restricted by an excess flow. So there's a lot of issues that could be happening. Uh, if you're trying to figure out issues you're having, feel free to give us a call. We'd love to talk to you, help figure it out. 1-800-252-5467. Uh, From all of us here at Linz, we hope to hear from you soon.